In this episode, a guide takes backpacking twins Melissa and Georgia Lori for a spot of swimming in a Mexican river. But he's not just any guide, he's a fraud. Unlicensed and lacking local knowledge, he takes the two girls directly into crocodile-infested waters. Melissa screams as a crocodile surfaces and begins swimming towards her. She can't get out of the water in time. Instead, the crocodile grabs her, pulls her underwater, and performs a death roll. Can her twin save her, or will she be taken beneath the surface, never to be seen again? Click like and subscribe. This is Fierce. 28-year-old twin sisters Melissa and Georgia Lori were on the trip of a lifetime. They were traveling around the world, a backpacking adventure that would test them to their limits and beyond. Three months into their journey, they traveled through Mexico. They spent some of their time volunteering in an animal sanctuary, as well as visiting some of the incredible sights that Mexico has to offer. Traveling together meant that they always had each other's back, and that's exactly what happened on the afternoon of June 6, 2021. Traveling on a budget often means you get to see more of the country. You get to experience the place more like a local. There are no fancy hotels, private car hire, or luxury day trips. For 90 pence, Melissa and Georgia jumped into a van that would take them 10 miles away from the popular resort of Puerto Escondido to Manialtepec Lagoon. They climbed out of the van at a restaurant called El Guayaca, sitting on the edge of the lagoon. It was a beautiful, still body of water surrounded by lush vegetation and sandy beaches. This was the starting point for their organized tour, a tour that was found out later to be illegal and hosted by an illegal tour guide. They boarded a small riverboat and motored upriver amongst the mangroves away from the lagoon, away from the approved swimming spot. But the girls were oblivious to this. They had paid for their tour, and they joined a group of other tourists also keen to see the sights. As the guide moored up the boat and cut the engine, the two girls followed the rest of the group and their guide into the water. They hadn't been drinking. They weren't being foolish. They were enjoying the refreshing coolness of the lagoon and swam out into the middle of the water, away from the bank, away from the rest of the group. What they didn't know was that this body of water was also home to crocodiles. It was a nesting ground for the huge reptiles. They used the mangroves for cover. They hunted for fish, birds, and small mammals in and around the water. Beneath the surface, they lurked. The splashing of the tourists caught their attention. And after the group had been swimming for a little while, Melissa spotted something in the water, a sight that froze the blood in her veins. Her adrenaline started pumping. Her heart was thundering in her chest as she saw the head of a crocodile pop up in the water a short distance away. It began to move. It was coming towards her. Silently, its tail powered it through the water, its eyes and nostrils above the surface. She yelled out to the others in the group, warning them that there was a crocodile, and everyone began swimming as fast as they could back to dry land. But Melissa didn't make it. The crocodile opened its jaws wide and brought them crushing down around Melissa's body. She was dragged underwater. One second she was there, the next she was gone. Melissa screamed as she was taken under. Thoughts of her family flashed through her mind. The thought of never seeing them again. The agonizing thought of her twin having to repatriate her body back to the UK. Of her parents having to bury their daughter. She thought she was going to die. She could feel the searing pain of the crocodile's bite. The force from its powerful jaws as it held her underwater. Georgia swam desperately towards her sister with no regard for her own safety. Melissa reappeared above the surface momentarily before being dragged back below. From the intensity of the attack, Melissa lost consciousness, and the crocodile thrashed her around in the water. Her body was being thrown from side to side like a rag doll. Then it performed a death roll. Holding Melissa in its jaws, it rolled over and over in an attempt to drown its prey, disorientating it and knocking the air from its lungs. Frantically, Georgia smacked the crocodile on the face. Its hard, armored skin felt like solid wood as Georgia punched it again and again, her knuckles pummeling it on the head and snout over and over. It worked. The crocodile let go of Melissa just long enough for Georgia to grab her. She pulled her towards the bank by her hair, trying to swim to safety, trying to make it out of the water. But the crocodile came back for more. 
It was determined to get its meal. It knew its prey was injured. It could taste the fresh blood, the scent of a meal. Georgia watched in horror as she and her sister were pursued by the crocodile, only its head above the water as it came in for another attack. She whacked it again and screamed. The commotion in the water, the screams, and the frantic paddling of Georgia were seen by other tourists. They scrambled to get out of the water, horrified as the attack unfolded. As Georgia fought off the seven-foot croc, it lunged at her. It grabbed her arm in its jaws, pulling at her, but she refused to give up. With her sister unresponsive next to her, she used her other hand to punch the crocodile on the nose. Stunned by the reaction, the crocodile released its grip. A tourist boat dashed to the girl's rescue. The crew hauled the twins aboard and assessed their injuries. Georgia had deep lacerations on her arm and hand and cuts to her legs. But Melissa was far worse. She was coughing up blood. Her body was covered in puncture wounds, but luckily she wasn't bleeding profusely. Drifting in and out of consciousness, Melissa felt the sensation of drowning from the blood building in her lungs. She had also breathed in a significant amount of water. Each time she came to, she screamed out and gasped for air. The pair was rushed to the hospital, Georgia holding her sister's hands and singing Stand By Me and Three Little Birds over and over again. Her voice soothing, calming her sister down and keeping her focused on anything but the pain. It was all she could do. She couldn't let her sister go. They were soulmates, a special bond between twins. When the girls arrived at the hospital, they were both pumped full of antibiotics to stave off infection from both the water and the crocodile's mouth. For Melissa, it was touch and go. Doctors placed her in a medically induced coma, giving her the best chance of fighting off the infection. She had made it this far. Now she needed to hold on a little longer to allow her body to recover from her horrific ordeal. Following the attack, their river guide, thought to be a German national and unlicensed and unregistered within the tourist trade, fled. He hasn't been seen since. The twins' parents flew out to Mexico to be with their daughters. Five days after the attack, Melissa was woken from her coma. Her breathing tubes were removed and she was able to breathe on her own. Six months on from the attack, the two girls said that they still had nightmares about it and suffer from PTSD. They were lucky to make it out alive. Georgia did the right thing. She never gave up on her sister. She never stopped fighting for her. It could have all ended very differently, but they were there for each other. It was a terrifying animal attack. How many people can say that they survived a crocodile's death roll?